Hi everyone, my name is Catherine Sheinberg and I run the School of Images, which is a uh, non-for-profit that was uh, set up so that students could really access a very old, the teachings of a very old lineage. Uh, my teacher was called Colette Aboulker Muska and she was maybe the foremost woman Kabbalist in Jerusalem. And her lineage goes straight to the 13th century. Her mother was a Sheshet, and the rabbi um, who was in the 13th century starting this lineage was called Jacob ben Sheshet. He was the student of Isaac the Blind. Isaac the Blind means that it wasn't his exact name, but his name was Isaac Sagay Nahor, but he was called the blind because he looked within, in the same way as Isaac in the Bible looked within and was blind. So Colette was um, taught by her grandmothers the techniques that were taught in the 13th century by 13th century Kabbalists. So the, the Kabbalah, this Kabbalah comes from Provence and from Spain. Now, um, I wanted to show you just quickly, you have some indication, some, uh, you can read about it in Kabbalah and the Power of Dreaming, which is my book. There's a new book coming out, which is going to be on Kabbalah and the subconscious. And I also wanted to mention before we start, a little essay by Moshe Idel that's called Nocturnal Kabbalists. He published it in 2002, and um, you may not be able to find it so easily. It is published in French. It's called Les Kabbalistes de la Nuit, and in which he talks of what I'm going to be talking to you about, about some of the techniques used by these Kabbalists um, who looked into their dreams to resolve their problems, to understand the divine, and to reach for a higher level of spirituality. As it's time, um, today people are reading Berachot, the Talmudic uh, treaty that talks about dreams, so we're going to be talking about that. And Berachot in 57b says, may you make me dream and give you life. There is another saying uh, in Berachot that dream is a well of flowing life. That whoever sees in a dream a well of flowing life, that they connect to the servants of Isaac dug in the valley. Whoever has that dream has found peace and has found Torah and says even more powerfully, has found me, has found life. We are told somewhere else in Berachot that dream is one sixtieth of prophecy and since prophecy is no longer then we need to approach the possibility of prophecy through our dreams. But most people will ignore their dreams because um, it's not in fashion today to think about dreams. But the Talmud talks at great length of dreams and so we have to ask ourselves, what is a dream? In the Hebrew, chalom is like Lechem, it's just the letters are inverted. Chalom, the dream, rises and it rises like bread to talk to you, really to dialogue with you. And what about? Well, about really your anxieties, your concerns, your questions, your yearnings. How do we know that? How do we know that the dream responds to your questions? Well, in Berachot again, 
you have a whole segment that talks about Caesar and Caesar says you Jews say you are exceedingly wise well tell me then what I will see in my dream tonight and of course the the rabbis tell him that he will see that the Persians press you into the service of their king and they will seize you and force you to pasture unclear animals with a staff of gold and the Talmud tells us this is exactly what he saw in his dream we have to kind of chuckle because clearly this is an induced dream he is given the images and then in the process he sees what he was told to see which means that you can all incubate your own dreams um, you can incubate them by sending images to your night dream or by asking questions and that is very easy to do as you fall asleep imagine a circle of light and in the circle you write your question now that question has to be really intensely um, felt if not the dream is not interested <laughs> mm. the dream will only rise to the to a true question to real concerns to real anxieties and it's like the mirror in Snow White the the famous um, uh, uh, fairy tale in which the stepmother stands in front of the mirror and asks who is the most beautiful of them all and the mirror is her dream and her dream answers Snow White Snow White may be the young child or the young uh, stepdaughter but it's really her soul her soul is answering it's not you in all your vanity but it's you in your soul beauty and these answers of the dream are astounding and profound uh, they are like a well of living waters they really come to you from the depths and what is this depth well we'll talk about it in a moment but they are always trying to realign us always trying to clarify us always trying to bring us back to our truth why is that well think of dream as your experiencing body that really wants you to get back to health Abraham Abulafia who was a 13th century Spanish Kabbalist always spoke of an ascending ladder of divinatory states which included of course dreaming and in my school we speak of that ladder and it goes from I'll give you the steps and there are many more but I'll give you the main steps darkness to light so we go from nightmare to repetitive dreams busy dreams those are dark dreams right we go to clear dreams that are really clarifying dreams trying to tell you how to solve whatever it is that you're uh, worried about then we have the great dream the great dream is completely perfect it's completely aligned and uh, you can read Joseph's great two great dreams when he's 17 and his brothers get very angry about the great dreams but his father Jacob says Jacob paid attention he paid attention for two reasons they were perfect like a mandala and they were two the two same dreams and Berachot is going to tell you again that if you see it twice then pay attention right the Rambam says that the aim of dreaming is to become like a star so how how do we ascend this ladder well Berachot is going to talk to us about that 
and it's also saying something that uh, well n numbers says something that's worth listening to if there is among you a prophet I the Lord will make myself known to you in a vision or a dream will I speak to you it's very important it really does mean that um, we are being spoken to by the divine so we talked about for a moment uh, Snow White and the Zohar remarks whatever a man does in the day his soul testifies against him at night so we, we need to know the difference the difference is the daytime is all about facts and your everyday reality but the inside is about truth so we find out about these truths from our dreams and from our visions so Berachot tells us he who does not see a dream within seven days within seven days is called wicked now don't stop at the word wicked because that's how they talked at the time it was um, today you could understand wicked as you've forgotten to pay attention to your inside your inside voice your inside visions your inside dreams because on the inside are all the answers dreams are really the pop-ups of our subconscious flow and remember we were talking about the well of uh, living waters it's really one of the ways of thinking about it is a river rose up in the Garden of Eden and flew and, and flowed through the garden so it's the river that rises up in the garden and the garden is you and the river that flows up in you is your imagination and so think think of your imagination as a vast cauldron of experiencing so you have thousands and thousands of bits and pieces of information and hear the word information in form right form so something is is kept in this vast cauldron that is only going to be awoken in you by a question even if you don't know what that question is or you have a vague anxiety that anxiety is going to be able to provoke a dream if you pay attention to the dream and you're going to need to pay attention to your dreams then you will find that the subconscious is not at all linear it's going to pick, take bits and pieces of information from everywhere and put them together like sewing a garment which is in fact um, what is said in, in uh, commentaries on Joseph that sewing the garment will bring to you a truth that you need to hear today so your dream is the sewing of the garment so that you get the answer you need to hear today and we could say that you are that Neelam the hidden world is provoked by your questions to Olam to the revealed world so but what do you do and this is of course a big big question what do you do if the dream that pops up is unpleasant repulsive or frightening I mean most people wake up from a nightmare and say oh thank God it was only a nightmare and so they forget about it 
So Berachot, on the contrary, speaks to you by saying, if a dream troubles you, you need to remedy it. And the word remedy is quite beautiful. It really is, we need to bring a remedy to it. And we can understand it as a tikkun. Tikkun, for most of you, is a well-known word. It's a repair. Basically, we need to repair the dream. So, in in the the uh, in Bechachot, and also in the prayer book, you have what is called atavat chalom, so the repair of the dream. And this is the prayer that you find also in Bechachot, in the presence of three three friends. Say, I have seen a good dream. It is good and may it be good and hear the word good it's repeated a number of times may the merciful one transform it for the better may it be decreed upon you seven times that it is good that may it indeed be good this is the maybe the simple way of doing a tikkun that we say the prayer. I'm going to talk to you about another way of doing it in a moment. So in other Bechachot words, we need to move from tribulation to joy, redemption, and peace. So we need to move from tribulation, so from pain, anxiety, troubles, concerns, all the... the um, difficulties that we encounter to joy, redemption, and peace. Is it possible to do considering the pressures that you are under in your own life? You may find that it's impossible to change your boss who is driving you crazy. How are you then going to change this tribulation into joy? What was the words? joy, redemption, and peace. You concentrate on the good. This is what Berachot tells us. So, and this is a very simple way of doing it, except you have to find f three friends. In my lineage, there's a more immediate way of doing the tikkun, the remedy, what we do is we go straight back into the dream. We close our eyes and we respond to the necessity of the dream. What do I mean by a necessity? Well, let's say you're in a room and the blinds are, are down and you feel it's very dark. The necessity would be simply to open the blinds. So it's a very simple thing, right? If the door is shut, and I felt in my dream the door is shut, I wish the door wasn't shut, you go back into the dream. And this is one very, very important point. You've got to protect yourself. So if you're going to open the door, protect yourself first by imagining that you put a circle or a cocoon of light around yourself or you even call on your angelic helpers to be there for you, and then you open the door. And generally, this is going to continue the conversation of your dreaming, allowing you to start going up the ladder. So let's take a few examples of correcting a dream. Now, they're very simple examples um, that you find mainly in repetitive dreams, like you dream of a clogged toilet. The necessity is very simple. You go back into the dream and you um, flush the toilet. You clean the bathroom. If you lose teeth, 
which they mention in Berachot, what do you do? Well, lift your last tooth, your fallen tooth to the sun so it's filled with light and then pop it back into your jaw, which is what the dentists do. And you will see this changes completely your attitude because you have said to your dream, I hear your message, I hear that I am weakened because I can't bite into the world, but now I'm going to, um, I've decided I can bite into the world. I'll put light in my mouth, I'll put my teeth back in, and I will um, engage the world. So here's a, oh, intruders, that's a very big one, intruders. Um, if somebody tries to intrude into your house, which is often a nightmare for a lot of people, again, you protect yourself by using sun rays to cocoon yourself, you make a shield of, sun, of, of light, you even take a sword if you need, or whatever you need to protect yourself. Open the door, or half open the door, and face the intruder. So here's a man who had a dream that he had for years and years, night after night after night, and he tried everything. And this is it, he was pursued. And he had never, never been asked to enter into the dream again, so I asked him to close his eyes, gave him all the protections he needed, and said, now turn around, and sure enough, there was a Gestapo guy who was running after him. He was a, a Jew from Austria. And when the Gestapo man saw him in the dream, the Gestapo man says, finally, I've run after you for so many years. Finally, can we stop this? And they shook hands, and that was the end of his dream. Right? He never had the dream again. So a tikkun, a repair. So in, in uh, Berachot, you have a lot that is written about this means that, this symbolizes that. And I just want to uh, alert you to the fact that the people who wrote that, the people who were reading the text at the time, were seeped in uh, uh, Torah and in learning, and they knew all these associations. And formulas to protect themselves came naturally to them. Whereas for us today, it's not the same. It, we are going to be having to understand our dreams in a different way. Do we need actually to understand our dreams? Well, I'm going to be radical and tell you that as long as you do the tikkun, you're safe. Of course, understanding your dreams has added value because it brings much greater insight and depth to your awareness. And indeed, Bechachot says to us, dreams not interpreted are like unopened letters. So they call for an interpretation. But I'm going to use the word that is used in the Bible. It's called opening. We're going to open dreams. So, Bechachot talks to us about a man who goes up to Jerusalem with a dream. And in, in he goes to the 24 different interpreters of dreams in Jerusalem. And all opened his dream, all opened it differently, and all the openings were realized. So there are two aspects to this. Imagine an apple. I'm holding the apple. I see the red side of it. 
but maybe you're seeing the patch of green on the other side. So you're going to open it differently than I am. And yet both are true because images say more than a thousand words. Images have many facets and so we can delve into them in different ways. But they're all, if we stay close to the dream, we'll be talking about the truth of that dream. Now, we have to be very, very important, uh, uh, very careful, right, when we start opening a dream. Because your friend has given you the dream. Of course, if you do it on your own, it's, it's easier, but it's, it is much more uh, productive to do it with a dream partner. So you have a dream partner and you are showing him your inside. This is very, very meaningful. So think of what Bechachot said. The dream follows the mouth and it came to pass as he interpreted it. So if you open a dream, open it in the direction of life. You see that in Bechachot. If the legs are cut off or the hands are cut off, it is for the good. <laughs> so uh, read that in Berachot. You'll see it's kind of funny. It gives you a chuckle. How they move towards life and towards goodness. So a lot of the openings in Berachot, as I've said, are openings that um, are no longer as meaningful to us because we're not seeped as much in the texts as the people who read it. But <coughs> we can be seeped in our own dreams and we can understand our dreams. There is in fact a methodology that I teach at the school in which you go down four levels to the sod the secret of the dream, what the dream really wants to tell you. And um, you can definitely uh, find out more about that, but we don't have the time now. What I just wanted to end with is that Kabbalists tell us that when you look inside, inside is dark, and yet suddenly Technicolor a dream appears. When you look inside, you are in fact creating light. You are creating light that is not the sun or the moon or electricity. You are creating your own light. Just as God created light by hovering over the darkness of the Tovavo and let there be light and there was light. The Kabbalists called this the light of creation, every time you look inside, every time you return to your dream, you are creating more light. And this is one of the most practical and simple reasons why you need to really look at your dreams. I think there may be many questions or if there are, um, I think the best would be to have another open mic where mm -hmm. I could answer those questions for you because we need to stop here. Thank you very much for listening. Bye. Oh, just the School of Images is on the web, School of Images, and you'll find all the information that you need. Thank you.